Hi, it's Dwyer. Always, 1776.com. Also, money, 1776.com. It's the day after the first Trump-Biden presidential debate for this election cycle in 2024. Let's talk about it, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, all we're trying to do here is to get at the truth, right? I think eventually what's real wins out. It might take some time. It might take years. It might take decades. It might take longer than that, right? But understand, you need to sort through what's real and what's not, right? What's a narrative and what's factually based? We've now seen the first debate. Let's offer some reality and some themes. Also, let's put this video in perspective. I'm just sharing my takes, right? I'm not some oracle. Obviously, this is just one man's opinion. You have yours. Feel free to share yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Now, the first theme I want to offer is that the emperor has no clothes. That should be a distinct possibility that voters consider when assessing their governments. Leaders such as Joe Biden, Justin Trudeau, Rishi Sunak, Jing Jiaoping, Zelensky, might not have solutions to the problems their countries face, right? As Democrats have learned, voters need to always ask themselves whether the primary they are voting in is even legit. Insiders had to know that Joe Biden is a shell of who he once was. But yet, understand, the system is set up to get and maintain power. So you just had a series of Democratic primaries where insiders knew that Joe Biden was a figurehead, that Joe Biden had significantly slowed to the point where he could barely raise his voice. Maybe the end goal was always to introduce some new Democratic nominee at the end of the process. But understand what that would mean if that's true. It would mean that they put on a dog and pony show that had voters believing they were voting for the nominee when they weren't. Let's continue here. Governments can be wrong, right? Incumbency does not connote good ideas. Understand, there's a variance in the approaches that governments internationally are using. They can't all be right. Just because elected officials are pursuing a certain agenda or a certain approach doesn't mean that that's the optimal approach or that it's even an effective approach. So right now in Japan, the debt relative to GDP is at more than 200%. It dwarfs what the debt level is relative to GDP here in the United States. In India, understand, there is a suffocating bureaucracy. I would hesitate to even call India a capitalist country. In China, you have a centrally planned economy. How did that work out for the USSR? Right? I'm sure there are young people watching this video who don't even know what the USSR was. Right? Compare and contrast East Germany in the 70s and 80s to West Germany. Folks, the Berlin Wall fell because the centrally planned economy of East Germany was ineffective relative to West Germany. Think about the United States. Folks, the interest on the debt right now 
exceeds our military spending budget. How sustainable is that? Let's get to the third thing. The power to tax needs to be re-examined. There was an interesting moment in the debate yesterday where Joe Biden wanted us to know that the economy is doing well. Right? Yet he conceded that he would need to raise taxes on the wealthy. In other words, on investors to make Medicare sustainable. Now folks, the income tax, in my opinion, and again, this is one man's opinion, um, let me point out too that I'm going to put a quick warning in the title of this video to point out that the views here are non-mainstream. It's really an interesting moment in time that supporting capitalism and trying to make the taxation scheme more equitable actually constitutes non-mainstream views, but they do in 2024, don't they? Just understand, the income tax has made it too easy for government to tax voters. We need to explore a consumption tax, which would give the taxpayer more control over the amount of taxes that they pay. Understand it would also weaken government's ability to target groups for taxation. Right? We're in a world now where people can claim they're only going to tax the wealthy. You and I know that as fiat currency loses its purchasing power, whatever laws they put in the books will over time morph into having the wealthy become most of us, right? As the dollar loses purchasing power, and as you get raises to compensate for your loss of purchasing power, the statutes on the books are suddenly going to deem you as being wealthy because you're making more dollars, not getting more purchasing power, but you're making more dollars than you were in the past. I believe we need to do away with the income tax. Let me raise another view. And again, it might sound controversial to some. Government right now is in a bubble. We need less of it. Government spending the GDP averaged 25.68% from 1900 to 2023. That's according to TradingEconomics.com. I encourage people to look at that site. In 2023, believe it or not, government spending to GDP was at 34%. Folks, the United States was not involved in a world war in 2023. This is during peacetime. 34%. We're overspending on government. Just compare the current numbers to the past numbers. As you looked at Joe Biden on the stage, you had to ask yourself, wow, would I trust this guy to run the local bank? If the answer is no, because of his diminished condition, how could you trust him to be President of the United States? And yet, at this moment, that is exactly what we're doing. The final point I'm going to make here is that we have to let markets clear. And that's going to lead to major price swings in some markets. Right, folks? The housing market is at risk of a huge downturn. Understand, we have to let that clear. Sooner or later, markets take over. You can't have the very high multiple you have now between 
the median income in an area and the median house price in an area. By historical standards, that's distorted. It's elevated right now. You have a whole group of people, folks who are working, two income households that cannot afford the median house in an area. Right, folks? That's widespread throughout the United States. Rather than try to come up with programs that peg and keep current price levels, we need to let the housing market adjust. If houses are overpriced, we need to allow them to lose value. Right? I know this is not what politicians are saying. But you understand right now that the housing market is in an unnatural state. That it's not sustainable to tell an entire generation of home buyers that they can't afford the median house in an area. Even with two incomes. Let's talk about the pension market. And that's really how it should be considered, right? Everyone thinks that their pension plan made promises to them that the pension plan has to keep, right? Understand, many pension beneficiaries are going to be paid back in watered-down dollars. That's what's been happening, right? You received promises, you assumed that those promises meant you would be receiving a certain amount of value. And then, of course, you find out that your pension plan simply doesn't have the money. Then the Treasury and federal government get involved and they start watering down the currency to enable debtors to pay creditors. So understand, you have pension crises right now in several states. We're in an internet era. After this video, I want people to just do some basic searches. I'm going to name some states here. Just look them up to figure out the amount of the pension shortfall. You're going to be astonished. New Jersey, Illinois, Hawaii, Alaska, New Mexico. Right? Just those five states. I'll leave it at those five states. Just to understand, there are very few states out of the 50 that actually have pension surpluses. Let's talk about another market that right now is overvalued, where sooner or later there will be a market adjustment, and that's the stock market. Folks, look at the Buffett indicator, please. Right, you're going to find out that the Buffett indicator is hopelessly overvalued right now. Right, stock prices simply aren't supported by the current profits being received by the companies issuing stock. Just understand, it's historically distorted. Now, we had a made-for-TV event yesterday where a former president and a current president tried to tell you that they had put the economy on the right track, right? That's in a world where the Buffett indicator is closing in on 200%. That's in a world where Several states have severely underfunded pension plans, right? That's in a world where, in states like California right now, in certain cities you have house prices that are at more than 10 times the median incomes, right, folks? I don't use this word lightly, but the presidential debate yesterday was really an imaginary one. 
The United States economy is in tatters. Right? It's so bad that one of Trump's campaign positions, and this unfortunately wasn't explored fully last night, one of his campaign positions is to take over the Federal Reserve. Right? As if you want the politicians actually involved in banking. Right, folks? The Federal Reserve should be done away with, not taken over by a President of the United States who can serve at most two terms. Right? Understand, we learned last night that Joe Biden is not who he once was, that he in essence is a figurehead, that as a special counsel noted, he was an elderly man with a poor memory. Folks, he currently is the President of the United States. He is supposed to be the Democratic nominee. You understand that they're likely going to replace him. Right? Insiders have known, I'm sure, what the special counsel determined just interviewing Joe Biden. That Joe, who can't maintain a strong voice these days, isn't as alert as we expect a president to be. Right? So focus on what's real, not TV presentations. Right? Focus on what's real. Realize that the government right now is overfunded and wants more money, right? Understand that Medicare might not be sustainable into the future, that major cuts are going to be needed, and many of them are going to be extremely unpleasant. Now, you could look at that reality. Right, you can compare current data to historical data and realize that the stock market is hopelessly, hopelessly overvalued right now. Right, you can just look at the variance internationally in government approaches and realize that there is no consensus on how to govern. Right? Chi believes that he can eliminate political opponents and that he can plan out an economy that got it woefully wrong in the past to the point where they had a one-child policy. Understand, China right now has huge demographic problems because of that past policy. You won't be able to figure out which policies were the right policies in the moment. That only becomes obvious several years from now. So I expect Japan to crater. The debt level is that suffocating. Snap elections were called in France and in the United Kingdom. I believe sooner or later, and I know in the United Kingdom they're talking about double lock and triple lock. I believe sooner or later in the United Kingdom, where Gordon Brown, of course, depleted their gold reserves already. I'm expecting the United Kingdom to have to come clean with its voters and actually point out that it cannot afford its current pension responsibilities. Now, you can look at that or you can believe the political narrative that things are going well. As Bobby McFerrin once said, don't worry, be happy. Right? The political narrative is so distorted that you have several countries with demographic problems. Right? Just look at the birth rates compared to history throughout Europe, for example. Right? Look at China. Folks, China's actually contracting now in terms of population. India has a greater population than China does. 
And just understand, at this time where you have several major countries with demographic problems, people are acting as if immigration is a major issue. Folks, it's ridiculous, right? I feel like I'm in an imaginary world right now. Let's just say the made-for-TV event that happened yesterday didn't impress me. I was unimpressed with Joe Biden's mental acuity. I was unimpressed with several of Donald Trump's ideas. Donald Trump at one point said that the United States was in a position late in his term, before COVID, to start paying down the debt. Right now, all I can tell you without a doubt is that the debt is not being paid down now and it's a problem to the point where the debt servicing costs in the United States something that needs to be addressed immediately now exceeds our level of military spending please google that those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video, right? All I ask is that the dialogue be factually based, right? I understand there's some hardcore partisans. I myself talk with a lot of them on a daily basis. Many of my friends who I went to school with in the 80s are, you know, hardcore party types, right? So I, I'm hearing hardcore, you know, partisan takes on things that are mathematical, right? Pension underfunding should be acknowledged. If you can't acknowledge what the facts say and understand these pension plans have to release data on how much they're underfunded. If you're not going to believe or acknowledge the data, then I ask that you state so in whatever message you leave in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thank you for stopping by.